Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Sponsor. Mr. Sponsor, Mr. Speaker, gusto ko po sanang makapagtanong ng ilang bagay sa ating uh, judiciary na nakalatag po ang kanilang budget sa araw na ito. Kapag ka po ang isang kaso, alimbawa po isang petisyon na naipile sa Korte Suprema, lumampas po ng dalawang taon, hindi pa po nare-resolve Meron po bang paglabag yun, uh, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor? Ano pa yung tanong natin na na po? Ang alam ko po, eh, napakalino po yung tanong ko kanina. Pasensya na kayo, hindi ko po narinig. Ano po, ah, ano po ang tanong nyo? Kung ang ah, dalawang taon po, Halimbawa po ang isang uh, petisyon ay naihayin sa Korte Suprema at makalipas po ang dalawang taon, hindi po na-resolve ba? Meron po bang paglabag na doon? Eh, basta po hindi pa submitted, hindi pa tumatakbo yung two years. Yung kaso niyo po na inyong sinasabi eh, submitted na ba po? Para malinaw po. Ang nakalagay po kasi sa saligang batas, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, ang isa pong kaso na naiyahin sa Korte Suprema, ay kinakailangan pong i-dispose sa loob ng dalawang taon. So, ang aking pong tanong, pag nakalipas po ang dalawang taon, malinaw po ba da, doon na meron ng paglabag? Your Honor, Mr. Speaker, the interpretation of the of our friends from the judiciary is that when it is submitted for decision, then the two-year grace period will have started. Nakalagay nga po doon ganun, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor. Opo. Kaya ang tanong ko po sa inyo, kung yung kaso pong inyong halimbawa, eh, submitted na for decision. Kasi doon po mag-uupisa yung two years. Totoo po yun. A case submitted for decision, the Supreme Court has two years within which to dispose the case. Opo. Sige, detalye na po natin ang ganun. Pagkatapos po ng uh, dalawang taon, na i-submit na po yung kaso for resolution sa Korte Suprema at hindi po yun na, na i-dispose within two years, may paglabag na po ba ron? Kung nasubmit na nga po for decision, may paglabag talaga po. Um, this, uh, sa ating kasamang Deputy Speaker, meron ba tayong specific case na nais pag-usapan? So at least uh, our, our situation is more detailed. Kahit na po walang specific case, Mr. Speaker, kasi marami po akong may bibigay sa inyong kaso, hindi lamang po dalawang taon. May umabot pa po na sampung taon kung gusto po ninyong uh, ibigay natin ang listahan. So ang tinatanong lamang po natin dito, kapag ka ang isang kaso which is submitted for decision, nakalagay naman po sa ating saligang batas na dalawang taon lamang ang uh, hinihingi na panahon within which to resolve them at kayo na po ang nagsabi na may paglabag na pagka lumapas sa sampung taon. Ngayon, humihingi po kayo ng ano, 
Humihingi po kayo ng specific case. Halimbawa po, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, yung kaso po ng GR number 227-282-87, ito po ay na-file pa noong October 14, 2016. Apat na taon na po ang nakararaan. Naliwanag po ba na may paglabag na dito, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor? Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, ang pinag-usapan po two years, eh pag-submitted na po for decision. Hindi po yung pag-file ng kaso. Siyempre may pleadings po yan, may kanya-kanyang argumento. Ngayon po, pag sinabi na, okay, the case is submitted for decision, dam po umaandar ang dalawang taon, Your Honor, Mr. Speaker. Alam po ninyo, Mr. Speaker, palagi na lamang pong ganun ang katwiran. Eh sino po bang maglalagay sa posisyon parang isang kaso will be submitted for decision? Hindi po ba sila? Yung pagpapail po ng last pleading, yun po ang panahon kung paano ikakategorize ang isang kaso na submitted for decision. Wala na pong ibang gagawin eh. Wala na pong ibang papel na ihintay ng Korte Suprema. Mula po doon sa pagkakasubmit ng huling pleading, yun na po yun eh. Kung ito po ay naisubmit October 14, 2016, wala naman pong hininging iba pang mga pleadings. 2020 na po ito, maliwanag na apat na taon ang nakararaan. E di may paglabag na po yun. Sa aligang batas po ang nagsasabi niyan eh. Your Honor, Mr. Speaker, not necessarily, unfortunately, because they are still deliberate. They may still be deliberating on the case. As long as it is specifically said that it is submitted for decision, then the two years will start. It may be right, it may be wrong, but that is the interpretation of the of the handers of the Supreme Court. We may agree or disagree with them, but. That is what they say. Yun po ang nakalulungkot, nakalagayan po ng isang litigant, Sir Speaker, Your Honor. Dahil po, kontrolado talaga ng korte, more particularly the Supreme Court, kung kailan niya sasabihin na submitted for decision. Maliwanag po sa ating mga rules of court. Nakapagka yung kahuli-huli ang pleading po ay, ay na-file na at wala nang kakailanganin pang ibang pleadings, yun po ang pagkakataon na submitted na for decision yun with or without the court's notice that it is submitted for decision. Kasi the litigant is at the complete mercy of the Supreme Court. So kung sasabihin niya, hindi pa po naman submitted yan. Eh, sino po ba ang maglalagay sa kalagayan na submitted for decision kung hindi sila rin? So, kaawa-awa po ang litigante, eh, maghihintay siya. Lalong-lalo na po kung ang pinag-uusapan dito ay kalayaan ng isang litigant. Sa mga katwid, kung mo hindi pa submitted for decision, na sila naman ang maglalagay doon, kung kailan submitted, inabot ng labing limang taon, wala pang pagkukulang doon. <coughs> Yun po yung aking gustong uh, hanapan sana ng kasagutan. Your Honor, Your Honor, Mr. Speaker, kung gano'n nga po, eh, sadya po nakakalungkot yun. Kaya nga po, may mga galing na abogado who can pressure, who can make things happen by, may, through, probably through their litigation, that the Supreme Court is forced to submit that for decision as soon as possible. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, kahit na po hindi magsasubmit ng motion ang isang litigan, katungkulan po ng Korte na i-resolve ba po yun sapagkat constitutional po ang provision. Ang sabi po ng saligang batas, 
every case submitted for decision must be disposed within the period of two years. Ngayon, kung umamin na po sila na lumampas na sa two years, hindi naman nila ginagalaw, okay na po yung sagot ninyo, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, na mayroong paglabag doon. Your Honor, Mr. Speaker, I just asked the, the court administrator and he said, unfortunately, it is not yet submitted for decision. If we want, I can join the distinguished deputy speaker as the sponsor of the judiciary to ask him to look into it. But I, I can certainly meddle into what they are doing in their decision making in how they deliver uh, the decisions, I don't want to hurry, hurry them up. But we can ask them, we can plead to them to look into it. What does it take for the court to submit it for decision? It was filed October 2016. What does it take for the court to submit it for decision? As far as this representation is concerned, no other pleadings were required. Well, Your Honor, Mr. Speaker, if there are no other pleadings required, everything has been done, all the arguments have been set in, then, then they should be, they should, they should take it upon themselves to submit it for a decision. That is precisely the reason why I am asking this, Mr. Speaker. What does it take for the court to submit it or to have it submitted for decision much earlier? Mr. Speaker, I can, I can only guess that they are doing their job as well as they can. I can only guess that probably they are undermanned. I can only guess that their budget is too small. That's why they're asking us to give them back the 55.88 billion instead of just 43.54 billion. <laughs> because the most we can do is actually to just ask them to look into it. Your Honor, Mr. Speaker. If you're talking about a certain case, we can surely remind them officially. Mr. Speaker, I think we need to explain. The Supreme Court is the court of last resort. Our people knows that very well. If the case is filed with the Supreme Court, that is the last chance of a litigant to seek redress or justice. We can understand that the litigant looks upon the Supreme Court as the last refuge in seeking justice. And because of the nature of that court, the court of last resort and considering further that the case probably revolves around her liberty or his liberty the court I think should be sensitive to the public's expectation that it should do its job in disposing the case as soon as, it's, as it can the only question is very simple, Mr. Speaker. The litigant is at the mercy of the court. The court can take its sweet time when to put the case submitted for decision. When? The poor litigant will wait until eternity. This is the whole point. Did the Supreme Court, Mr. Speaker, ever conduct any any study what is the impact of every case resolved on time or not on time on the very life of a litigant do they know how they expect the court to do its job what is the impact of the court's decision on the very life of a litigant is there any study ever conducted by the supreme court along this line when the expectation of the people is so high, 
especially when they feel aggrieved and they feel injustice, they go to the Supreme Court as the court of last resort. And then here we are trying to determine whether or not the two years is enough or the two years was not enough because the case was not ever submitted for decision. I will not belabor that point, Mr. Speaker. I will go to another point.